Welcome back to Anime Espresso. My name is Jordan, and today we'll- Welcome back to Anime Espresso, my name is Jordan, and today I'll be talking about some of my spoiler-free thoughts on Japan Sinks 2020. This anime is based on the 1973 novel written by Sakyo Komatsu, which won a ton of awards including the Seiyun Award. The Seiyun Award is for Japan's best science fiction works. But we're not here to talk about books, we're here to talk about cartoons. So without further ado, will this anime be remembered as Japan Sinks or Japan Stinks? Japan Sinks is literally the film 2012 for weeaboos. Our cast of characters are living their lives in a modern day Japan when shit hits the fan and the earth starts crumbling faster than my faith in American politics. God bless the armed forces. But in all honesty, it's a really human story about coming together as a family in the face of adversity and confronting life-threatening challenges and decisions. The show isn't about who's best girl or harems or beach episodes. It's about trying to find hope in a seemingly hopeless situation in order to escape appearing as Davy Jones' henchman in the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot. A survival story is only good if the writers can convince the audience to care about its characters. Otherwise, there is no real sense of tension. Luckily, Japan Sink's characters are believable and endearing. However, this is a bit of a double-edged sword, because there are some horrible, horrible deaths and no plot armor. I'm not going to tell you who, if anyone, makes it out, but cheering on my favorite characters through some dark moments kept me engaged until the end. Our main character is Ayumi, a high school track star who is strong-willed yet very immature. And to be honest, I'm just counting my blessings her track scene was less scarring than that of Devilman Crybaby. Ayumi loves her family, but due to her overwhelming teen angst, she often clashes with her mother's judgment. Aside from Ayumi's mother and father, we have her little brother Go, a young esports enthusiast and competitive gamer. We've also got the Japanese version of YouTuber Tucker Gott flying around on his paramotor for views, and a crazy old man who shoots first and asks questions later. There are a ton of characters who intersect with the main group as they travel across Japan seeking refuge, but there are far too many to name individually. If anything though, the show's characters are its greatest strength. I love the art style of Japan Sinks. The characters are drawn in a more realistic fashion, and these proportions add an element of believability to the series, helping me invest myself in the characters and the world. Don't get me wrong, I love more chibi art styles, but I do find it more difficult to relate to a character if their head resembles that of a watermelon. The movement itself is good, but not great. I understand every studio doesn't have the budget of UFO Table, but a little more movement would add so much life to the show's amazing drawings. Holy moly, if you don't watch this show, please at least check out the opening theme on YouTube, the painterly visuals combined with the beautiful piano composition is spine tingling. Most of my favorite anime openings are high octane guitar showcases, so if I'm telling you that this piano slaps, you know it's gonna be a banger. As for the rest of the audio, the soundtrack is good, but it's mostly filled with pieces aimed at building the show's atmosphere, and not designed to be in the spotlight. Booming drums and soft piano melodies lurk in the background of each scene to help those emotional and dangerous moments hit harder. The soundtrack catalyzes the storytelling, so while you won't be jamming to these tracks on Spotify, they're still putting in a ton of work. As far as the voice acting goes, I watched Japan Sinks with the English dub, which was really good. That being said, the show also has a Japanese, French, Spanish, and Italian dub, so if you've seen the show in any of those languages, leave a comment and let me know if it was any good. Despite the gruesome deaths and devastating tectonic shifts, Japan Sinks is ultimately about family. In Ayumi's darkest moments, it is her love and faith in her family that keeps her headstrong and committed to staying alive and protecting those around her. This is made evident as early as episode 1, as after the first earthquake hits, Ayumi, Go, and her mother and father set out to find one another, worried sick for each other's safety. Heck, there's an entire episode where Ayumi and Go are lost at sea, slowly dying of starvation and dehydration, and Ayumi refuses to let herself even think about using death as an escape, as it would leave Go stranded all by himself. It's really touching, and I could definitely feel myself getting emotional. That being said, Japan Sinks is dynamic, and it understands that families are not perfect. Ayumi and her mother fight and disagree with each other's judgement. A lot. But they don't allow that to tear them apart. If anything, it makes their bond stronger after they manage to make up. Family isn't often a huge part of anime, so to see it put at the forefront of a show and see it done well is really a treat. 
Japan Sync's secondary theme is nationalism. As a Westerner, it's difficult to speak on how significant a role nationalism plays in Japanese society, but within the narrative, it adds an interesting dynamic. Ayumi's mother is Filipino, and her father is Japanese, and as a result, Ayumi and Go have a darker skin tone. This becomes more relevant when the main party are forced to rely on the generosity of others. Some people begrudgingly help out our party, while others straight out refuse to share their resources. In fact, Go resents the fact that he's Japanese, saying that the Japanese are slaves to a herd mentality and slander those who break the mold, clearly showcasing that he's been a victim of racism and discrimination even as a young child. While this social commentary is interesting, it ultimately does not feel like it's woven into the main narrative as tightly as it could have been. The inclusion of nationalism feels like a layer added on top of an existing story, as if it were to be removed I don't think a ton would really change. In a sea of samey anime, a show called Japan Sink somehow ironically rises above a lot of its competition. And another big plus is the narrative is complete, so you're not stuck waiting on a second season. Now I'm not a big fan of disaster movies, but the endearing and engaging characters kept me glued to my seat until the very end. Heck, I watched most of the show in one sitting. The narrative felt real, not like a hodgepodge of different tropes. And you're certainly not going to see any pseudo harahara yukai dances between episodes. This is dark subject matter, but if you're in the mood for something a little more serious, this show is definitely worth checking out. And for that reason, I'm going to give Japan Sinks 2020 3 out of 5. Tum-tum.